story recapped here. Today, I'm gonna explain an action, comedy, and horror film called Cooties. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. At a chicken factory in Illinois, one of the chickens they use for their nuggets appears to be carrying a mysterious virus. Unfortunately, this batch is sent to the local elementary school, where one unlucky student, Shelly, gets one of the pieces. Meanwhile, Clint is an aspiring novelist from New York who hasn't had much luck in his career. He's back at home at Fort Chicken, Illinois with his mom, who thinks his story isn't that good either. Because of this, Clint applies as a substitute teacher at the elementary school. The security guard Rick tries buying drugs from him when he gets there, but he doesn't have any. Furthermore, he gets parked in by the sports teacher Wade. When he gets off his car, he notices someone wrote a vulgar sentence on his car window. Looking around the school, he notices that it's full of misbehaving students, some who even swear. In the office, he meets Vice Principal Sims, who confiscates Clint's phone because it's a no-cell phone campus for both teachers and students. Sims advocates making children experience the pre-digital era and wants the kids to play outside instead of on their phones. When Sims is about to give him a map, Clint declines because he used to go to Fort Chicken Elementary. When he gets to the teacher's lounge, he has a bit of trouble interacting with the other teachers because of their zany personalities. One of the teachers, Rebecca, is wearing a button that calls the police if someone touches her inappropriately. Wade, the sports teacher, doesn't pay attention to him, while the sex ed teacher, Doug, doesn't know how to talk to people. Then there's Tracy, who's still in the closet with his sexuality. But Clint doesn't care about anyone and goes straight to Lucy, one of the teachers he went to school with. When Clint starts talking to Lucy, Wade comes by to join their conversation. They start talking about Clint's work-in-progress book about a man who buys a possessed boat. However, Wade points out that it's similar to other works already done before. Afterward, Lucy walks with Clint on the way to his classroom, where he mentions that Wade is a douche. But Lucy just laughs, saying that Wade is her boyfriend. In class, Patriot and his friend Dink make fun of Shelly because of the face blister she got from eating the nuggets. Once class starts, Clint tries to establish a connection with his students, but Patriot starts mocking him. Furthermore, Patriot still has his phone. When Clint tries to scold him, Patriot threatens to say that Clint was touching him inappropriately. He realizes that Patriot was the one who wrote on his car, so he just lets it be. Clint does his best to continue class despite the distractions by making them read his story draft. Calvin raises his hand to volunteer and while he's reading, Patriot goes back to torment Shelly. But when he pulls on her pigtails, he somehow removes her skin with it. Immediately, Shelly turns to attack Patriot and bites his face. Clint jumps to break the fight and gets scratched by Shelly. When Shelly runs away, Clint brings Patriot to the nurse's office. On the other hand, Rick finally acquires his psychedelic mushrooms and eats them in his vehicle. During recess, Clint goes back to the teacher's lounge for recess and tells Lucy about what happened during recess. Meanwhile, Dink confronts Shelly for attacking Patriot, but Shelly also attacks him. Wade notices the cheery mood between Clint and Lucy at the basketball court and starts to get annoyed. Soon enough, Rick notices that one of the infected kids started eating one of the parents. Even though Wade is nearby, he doesn't notice the current carnage happening. So Rick calls Sims to report the incident, but he's not entirely sure because he's under the influence. Still, Sims goes outside to check it out. Unfortunately, the moment he goes outside, the kids start attacking attacking him. On the other hand, Patriot is growing feral and sneaks inside the principal's office. At the lounge, Rebecca presses her button to call for the police. Finally, Wade notices the infected children and runs inside the school, managing to lock the kids outside. Meanwhile, Patriot sabotages the phone lines in the office. A few moments later, Dave, the local sheriff, arrives, but his finger gets bitten when he reaches for the children. Immediately, he drives away, but one of the kids is hiding inside his car and attacks attacks him. Seeing that the police officer was no help, Wade decides to take matters into his own hands, but Patriot ambushes them. Clint gets tackled by Patriot, so Rebecca pepper sprays the zombie child. Patriot then attacks another teacher instead, where they get stuck inside a closet. The rest of the teachers take their chance to escape, with Wade leading the way. But while looking for a hiding place, they come across Calvin, but luckily, he isn't infected. So they take Calvin with them. The group finds somewhere to lock themselves in even while Shelly is on their tail. However, Patriot lets the rest of the infected students inside the building. While everyone is confused, Calvin tells them that the students have cooties. Although the rest 
don't take it seriously, Doug realizes that Calvin has a point, so he starts examining Shelly's blisters, but she soon runs away. On the other hand, Wade suggests that they should run outside and escape with their vehicles, but Clint rejects the idea and instead says they should go to the principal's office to call for help. Meanwhile, Patriot starts breaking the cell phones in the office one by one. With two opposing sides, Lucy steps up to stop their argument. She suggests that they wait until 3 o'clock once the parents arrive to pick up their kids. Then, they'll run up the roof to signal for help. Suddenly, Lucy notices Clint's scratch from Shelly, so Wade locks him inside one of the rooms for quarantine. But Doug goes inside with Clint to examine the infection. Turns out, Clint has been infected, but not in the same way as the children. Apparently, even though Clint is getting flu symptoms, there isn't any risk of him turning violent for now. When they ask how Doug knows about this, he shows them his hands, saying that he examined Clint's fluids. After waiting for a while, 3 o'clock soon arrives. The teachers, alongside Calvin, goes up the roof to ask for help from a newly arrived parent. However, the mom was too preoccupied with her phone to notice what was happening in her surroundings. Furthermore, her child Racer goes inside the car and starts eating his baby brother. And soon, his mother. Suddenly, Tracy gets grabbed by one of the kids, Tamra, but it turns out she's not infected. After the rest of the kids notice their presence, the group runs back inside to hide in the gymnasium. However, Dink manages to grab Doug, so Wade takes a fire extinguisher and bashes him to death. Meanwhile, Lucy tries to reassure the two kids that everything will be fine as long as they haven't been bitten or scratched. But Tamra shows her that she has a scratch mark on her back. Knowing this, Lucy takes her to the bathroom to isolate her. After the incident, Doug proceeds to dissect Dink to figure out what's going on. On the other hand, Rick is still hiding in his car, still affected by the mushrooms he ate. Despite the zombie situation, Lucy confronts Wade about their relationship because he's jealous of Clint. Turns out, Wade was planning to propose to Lucy, but hesitated when she saw her smiling with Clint. Afterward, Doug finishes his dissection and shares his findings with everyone. Turns out, it might be a virus where the children are already starting to decompose despite still being able to use other functions, so they're technically not human anymore. However, Lucy points out that Clint and Tamara didn't turn despite being scratched, so Doug shares his theory that it only affects people that haven't gone through puberty yet. Suddenly, the lights go out because Patriot is turning off the breakers. In a panic, the teachers check on Calvin and see him sleeping. Turns out that Calvin has diabetes and needs to eat anything with sugar. They hear noises through the walls and start getting scared because the door is opening. While panicking, Lucy tells Wade that she can't marry him. Suddenly, the doors open to reveal that it's just a janitor, Mr. Hatachi. However, the infected kids burst into the gymnasium and follow the janitor into the boiler room. Lucy's priority is to feed Calvin. However, Mr. Hatachi doesn't have anything with sugar either. Just then, an emergency broadcast could be heard on the radio that people are already advised to evacuate, so there's no more chance of anyone coming to save them. With their hopes slowly diminishing, Clint stands up with a plan. First, they plan to use the ducks to get through from place to place, get Calvin a snack from a vending machine, then grab Wade's truck keys from the teacher's lounge. But since Clint is the smallest guy, he's the one forced to do it. Before leaving, he entrusts his bag to Tracy before Tamara gives him a cootie shot. While Clint is going through the ducks, the rest of the teachers can communicate with him through a walkie-talkie. Instead of giving him words of hope, Wade starts arguing with him. After having enough, Lucy loses her mind and starts angrily shouting at everyone before following Clint through the ducts. Finally, they get to the teacher's lounge where Clint tries to get a snack from the machine. On the other hand, Lucy grabs Wade's keys before going to the office to get a phone, but is unsuccessful. When Clint gets left alone, he struggles in obtaining a snack because the money isn't going in. Suddenly, a zombie child comes in with a bike, so Clint hides beside the machine. But of course, now that he's in trouble, the vending machine suddenly starts working. The noise alerts the child and starts screaming, which Patriot hears. Patriot is running toward Clint, but doesn't head back inside the ducts until he gets a snack. Right away, Lucy and Clint start crawling back, but because Patriot is close behind them, Clint just throws the snack toward the group's direction before heading to a different path. Lucy and Clint arrive at a different room and trap the zombie children inside the ducts. Because of this, the children head in the group's direction, so Clint gives them a heads up. Successfully, they manage to barricade themselves in, but Tracy starts panicking because it means that they're trapped inside. While Clint and Lucy are locked in together, they 
they start having deeper conversations. Clint confesses that he wanted to see Lucy, hence why he returned to Illinois. Furthermore, he admits that he isn't a writer yet, but instead is an actual first grade teacher in New York. Because of the growing fond moment, the two kiss, but regret it right away. During their conversation, Clint gets an epiphany. Meanwhile, the rest of the teachers talk about what they want in life. A few moments later, Lucy contacts the group through the walkie-talkie, and Wade answers. He apologizes to Lucy for his behavior, admitting that he was jealous of Clint because he's a fancy writer from New York while Wade is just a mere PE teacher. So, Clint tells him about his failures and would willingly support their relationship. Then, Clint tells him about his plan to feed the children some pills. So, Clint and Lucy do exactly that. Meanwhile, Wade starts leading the rest of the group to find makeshift weapons they can use to fight back. Clint tells him the rest of the plan, not knowing that other radios are receiving his signals, such as Rick's truck and a walkie-talkie near Patriot. Finally, the group meets up in the hallway to make a run for Wade's truck. Though it goes smoothly at first, the zombie children come at them one by one, so Wade shoots them with baseballs. When they get outside, they don't notice that Mr. Hitachi stays behind to fight against the oncoming children. Meanwhile, the rest of the group braves the onslaught of zombie children outside. Although they manage to get to the truck, Wade sacrifices himself to hold off the children while the group escapes. He throws the keys to Clint, but Lucy doesn't want to leave Wade behind. However, Clint just holds her back as they watch Wade get overrun by zombie children. With no other choice, they leave him behind. On the road, the group doesn't notice Patriot climbing up their roof after hiding at the back of the truck. When Clint notices that they're almost out of gas, Patriot grabs Clint from the window and Clint slams the brakes to throw him off. With zero hesitation, Clint reverses on Patriot to crush him against the tree. When they get back to driving, they arrive at a nearby town, Danville. However, it's also a ghost town. But because they're out of gas, they have no choice but to exit their vehicle. In a nearby electronic shop, they see the news covering the pandemic spread across the country and how they managed to trace the possible source from the Fort Chicken factory. Realizing that the nuggets may be in question, Doug says he might be able to make a vaccine for the virus if they can obtain one of the nuggets. Suddenly, they notice that zombie children start running toward them. So, the group ran inside the nearest building they could hide in, a children's playground. Inside, they see the remnants of an ongoing children's party where the infected nuggets were being served. So Doug immediately takes one. Cornered by zombie children and stuck inside the playground, the group feels hopeless until Wade arrives to the rescue. Alongside Mr. Hatachi, Wade tells the group to get in their van while he holds off the children using a spray gun. When they get out, they barricade the children inside the play place. Before it's too late, they run inside the van, which turns out to be driven by Rick, who still thinks he's having a mushroom-induced trip. Clint notices Wade's choice of weapon and tells him that water won't hold them off. However, the liquid turns out to be gasoline. Then, Wade sets the building on fire after they get out. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.